What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to refit my custom fuel tank and sort out the fuel tank vent line up into the catch can through the trans tunnel. Hopefully this won't be too difficult with one person and no hoist putting the fuel tank in, but let's find out. So now I'm going to fit these rubber line P clamps um, just to hold the... So I'm going to run them through the trans tunnel and then maybe one or two in the engine bay just to hold one here and maybe one down there somewhere there just to keep this um, fuel fuel tank vent line in check mainly through the tunnel because it will, could flap around in there so these are pretty cheap uh, I got them from super cheap for under 10 bucks I think eight or nine dollars something like that so anyway let's get into that now all right so first thing I need to do is make sure I've got a bolt that fits in here which is good and I want a short one so that it's not sticking out too far everywhere um, I'll be using my rib nuts for this. It magically appeared, so just gotta see if these will actually fit. This looks alright, so let's fit that. This is a bit too big, this is more like what I want. I can always fit shorter ones in there if I need to, but at least for now I can get it sorted. Um, the shorter ones might be handier in the trans tunnel if they're sticking out a bit too far, but I think I've got a fair bit of room there because as I said it's a it's a mad that widened trans tunnel, so it's quite quite fat. There's a fair bit of room to fit in. Well, not a fair bit of room, I don't want to oversell it, but there's a bit of room there so we can get some things done. <laughs> Actually, I just realized, while there's a lot of room, there's nowhere near enough room to fit this whole friggin' thing in there unless I took out the whole engine again, or trans again, which without a hoist and without an engine crane or anything like that, I couldn't, and just for these things, I couldn't be bothered, so it's gonna be bolts. Okay, that's the first peak clamp holding it in with the rib nut. Second one is there through the trans tunnel. It's holding it pretty tight through there. So I've already got a big hole here into the cabin and a little little hole there. So I'll just drill that a bit bigger, put the rib nut in there and hook it that way. I'll suss out covering that up later on. Um, it would have been, I suppose it would have been from the heater hose or something like that. Anyway, let's drill that hole out and mount that rib nut. Rib nut tool locked and loaded. Alright, let's see if we can fit this in. Of course not. Oh well. Got yet another hole in the cabin that I will need to rectify later on. <laughs> uh, okay, so maybe I'll just put one through there. No, that won't work either. I'll... Fuck. Let's see if this will fit anyway. Maybe just a regular bolt. All right, well, let's plug this up. Lucky that's the only hole that I've made in the engine bay that I don't need at the moment, but I'm sure there'll be more to come. Let's give it time. So this mount here, that whatever it was for, and I have been wondering what I could use it for because I didn't want to get rid of it yet, or just yet, um, so I can use it for this. Perfect, I should have tried that before I drilled holes in everywhere, but sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. That looks pretty good. All right, we just need to figure out one more, I guess, somewhere down there. Do I really bother or not? Okay, there you have it. I 
I've finished mounting the fuel vent hose there and there. That one I made the hole a little bit too big for the riv nut and the next size up riv nut I needed to drill more I just don't have a big enough drill bit for that and it wouldn't fit into the hole there though even though it was big, too big for the M5 it was too small for the M6 still and I couldn't be bothered making it bigger so that works. I could probably take a little bit more off this hose there. You might have noticed I've for the PCV outlet here, I've just used a, I've changed it over for a black hose. I uh, also extended this part here so it sits pretty much straight. And I've also changed this to a black hose too from that ugly sort of cheap aftermarket hose looking, like garden hose looking stuff. Um, better to save that for the bongs than for engine bays. All I need to do now is get this part here, this little nozzle welded in sort of at an angle like that I guess so then this clips in here um, and it will run basically straight along here up to there it's a more direct line and I can trim that off a little bit and it should look much neater now to mount the fuel tank so this is the custom one I've got built fits right into the stock slots the vent here fits onto the stock vent size and the intake would have been good if you welded on a angle up too so I could just get a straight hose but I'll use the one that I've got currently. A new one is $264. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you know anyone that's cheaper for a curved, it's like a right angle piece basically. It comes out here then goes up. So if you just welded on a little right angle or a curved piece there it would have been so much easier because I could have got a million other choices of fuel rated stuff from like Pertec or whatever that will be cheaper and probably better too. Um, so it's got all the, the outlets, the returns, uh, the positive and negative for the fuel pump that's inside the tank. This is for the gauge, the fuel tank gauge. Um, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Uh, just like that. Okay, so it's this side that I need to make sure is connected. It's this side, all right, perfect. Okay, just one other thing. Let me know in the comments below if you think this has been powder coated just in black or in wrinkle coat. Try and get it close up. Because you won't be able to see if I don't get it close up. But yeah, that's, that's this powder coated, coated version of wrinkle coat probably the stupidest powder coater I've ever met in my life. Anyway, let's get fitting. I forgot to mention the tank is baffled on the inside so um, it will help if I'm quartering, sloshing around, things like that and it's about 47 litres so uh, and eight nine sort of um, litres bigger than a stock that's a new tank. So it's pretty tight under here. Um, if you look up here, you can see, if you look up here, you can see, that's the fuel filler down the bottom. Up the top is the vent. So somehow I've got to fit it up in here, fit them onto the fuel tank. That's the, uh, that's the fuel filter, so I can screw that on. And then that's the inlet and the outlet that I've also got a fill on. Now that's those that there is where one set of mounts are. The others are there. This I guess is is or was the um for the fuel gauge. Yeah I assume it was for the fuel gauge but never know. Anyway so I'm gonna have to run those wires too. I just want to test fit this first um this tank and see how easy hard or otherwise it is to sort of get things in place. <laughs> in um, although I'm having trouble underneath these are the fittings that I screw in through the little peephole up top and 
that's what it looks like underneath. Um, I need to, I'm having a bit of trouble with the fitment. You probably can't see here. I need to bang these out. These are my R31 rear brakes. Um, I need to, I'm screwing these in and screw the other ones in. Um, going to be an absolute pain in the ass to get, you really can't see that much here, but it's going to be an absolute pain in the ass to get the, the tube, the filler tube and the vent on. So I just, just want to test fit this and I'm noticing that this, these hydraulic lines that run along the side here, over there, that go all the way along here to the, my Astra power steering pump. So I'm fitting power steering, or well, I've fitted power steering. I've got yet to test if it works or not. Um, but because they run along the side here, um, they're actually in the way, I think. So I just want to see how well it's going to fit before I do anything else. So let me just tighten up these four bolts and see where we end up there. Okay, so one thing I noticed is these, the return and outlet, which I have yet to determine which one is which, um, don't reach here. So this piece needs to be taken off and moved. Basically, so these are facing that way. These inlets should be sitting somewhere over there so they can reach. everything around so now these fit secured in place this is obviously tightened down and my favorite part of this whole custom fuel tank install when you put this this panel back in place guess what doesn't go all the way down Ooh, there's a bit of room there <laughs> not the best design of all considering that is right where that goes, but hey, who gives a shit about that when you're charging two thousand dollars for a custom fuel tank? Hey, fit and finish to the actual vehicle that you're custom building it to is not a priority, is it? Keep your eye out on these custom fabricators out here in Sydney, boys. Some of them are really fucking dodgy and not the smartest people. All right. I think for the moment we should be okay. This doesn't look too difficult, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll be wrong about that. Um, now, this is cut out, so flares were fitted on it before. Uh, this would be a lot harder if you didn't have that cut out, but I remember taking out the original fuel tank and it wasn't that simple anyway, so. Anyway, I won't film this because I don't have two hands to hold my phone with the torch and the camera. So I'll show you the finished result and I'll tell you how long it took or how short it took. Fucking hell. <laughs> 